I'm in my 67 Mustang on my way to Ford's secret test facility, just off the A127, next door to Billericay Town Football Club, for the world's first remote control test of the brand new Ford Mustang Mach 1. That's right, rather than me wax lyrical about what I like about the car, it's your questions we should be addressing today, with me behind the wheel under your remote control. I asked you to tell me what you love about Mustangs, and the responses flooded in. Some of them were a bit off topic. Drake Loden's question concerning the new Mustang was, where's the new episode of the Grand Tour? Someone called Nils Rose made the astute observation, horse go very fast. Yes, Nils, I'm sure it does. This is it, the new Mustang Mach 1. To the untrained eye, it might look like a run-of-the-mill Mustang, but as any enthusiast will tell you, the Mach 1 is no standard model. This new one comes with many subtle improvements, courtesy of a load of borrowed performance parts from the very most excellent GT350. And up front, there lives and breathes a 5-litre V8, churning out 454 brake horsepower, and a mighty planet-twisting 390 torques. Oh, there it is, all hunkered down and mean. I'm going to be literally the first person outside of Ford UK to drive this thing, and I am so excited. But today isn't about me. It's all about you. And me. Have they taken any sort of design cues from the original 1969 model? And if they have, how have they implemented it into the new modern design? Well, Joe, it's bristling with design cues recalling the Mustangs of old, just the stance of it. The headlights might be a different shape now, but it still has hooded eyes to give it that Mustang frown. There are bonnet vents, the sculpted sides, but specific to the 69 Mach 1, either outer edge of this broad grille, they've recalled the original fog lights. It's got similar graphic treatment. And then as we move along its flanks at the back, there's a little lip spoiler. It has chromed exhaust tips. So the design references to the original Mach 1 are there. Plus it's got Mach 1 written on it several times. Hello, Richard. I just want to know two things. Does it come with a Blaupunk? And what's the gas mileage like? Well, Sammy, interesting. The whole ski instructor meets famous crocodile wrestler vibe. As for your questions, it has a 12-speaker B&O premium sound system. And if you're that worried about MPG, this probably isn't the car for you. One thing you'll have noticed is that I, as your remote control car tester, I'm about to get into the wrong side of this car. But don't worry, when it goes on sale in the UK, they will put the steering wheel on the proper side for you. Right. Oh boy, here we go. <coughs> oh yeah, it works. Uh, and off we go. Good, this thing. And it's fast. Of course, it's fast. It's got a massive V8. <laughs> Hi, Richard. My name is Vlad. I'm 24 years old, and I'm driving Mustang for two years. The special thing which I loved it. It's the custom exhaust. How loud is the new Mustang? Well, Vlad, you can hear for yourself now. What do you think? Well, I say you can hear. The Mach 1 actually has an active value performance exhaust, which varies the level of noise according to what mode you have the car set in. There's even a quiet mode, I think, to be used if you live on a busy street and leave for work early in the morning. And in quiet, the V8 rumble is suppressed to just 72 decibels which is about the same level of noise a sleeping dormouse makes. Put it in track and it gets a whole lot louder, as well as firming up the suspension and backing off the traction control. 
Oh, come on, Richard. Mach 1 is 343 metres a second, or over 760 miles an hour, so no, no, it, it, it can't do that. You'd need rockets on your car to do that, and that sort of thing generally ends badly for me. Ford haven't released 0 to 60 figures and top speed for it. If they have released those by the time you watch this, they will appear here. Hi Richard, I haven't got a Mustang but I've always loved them. How does the Mach 1 handle in the corners? Because it is still a Mustang after all. Well Darren, to be fair, it's some time since we've been able to laugh at Mustangs for handling like a grand piano on an ice rink. But the current generation Ford have sorted it. They've dragged the Mustang kicking and screaming into this century. That's established fact. Ford claim the Mach 1 is the best handling Mustang ever to reach the UK. But, well, they would say that. They make it. However, there is some evidence to support it. The Mach 1 comes as standard with Magnihidrutino... Magnihidrutino... That word, suspension. Basically, what you get is tiny magnetic particles in the fluid inside the dampers. If you then introduce electricity, you get magnetism, and that affects the particles and affects the fluid, the viscosity of it, and affects the damping. Incredibly quickly, in fractions of a second, it is very, very clever. Add in the Mach 1 specially calibrated steering, stiffer springs and limited slip diff, and you start to see why actually it feels all those lovely yummy things taught and planted. That said, all I've done so far is swoop rather elegantly around these gently banked curves. I feel like I need something more. I think I shall construct a scientific test. And here's what I made. If you look closely, it actually resembles a figure eight. And it's a very scientific method of testing a car's handling. It shall forever be known as Richard's Loop. So here we go into my new Mustang testing device. I can test a left-hand turn, turn the wheel anti-clockwise, works well, straighten it up. If I then try and turn to the right, yep, that absolutely seems to work. I have just one suggestion, as you know, in your control, would this test work better if I went a bit faster? Just wondering, I don't know. I suspect it might just be more... Yeah, yeah, that is better. Yeah, uh, this has improved the test no end. Yeah, all it needed was a bit more science, actually. I'm pretty sure the Ford people can't see me, which is good because uh, well, I don't want to give away my testing secrets, our testing secrets. So let's just keep this between you and me. Oh, a little bit of off the track testing there, that's good. Very, very scientifically rigorous. I am the first person outside of Ford UK to drive this car and this is what I'm doing. Important work. My name is Scott Gibson. Um, my love for Mustangs comes from being uh, raised in a family where a granddad and a dad both are huge Ford fans. I have a 67 Project car that I bought uniquely because of that. Um, and then as I was working on it, my granddad actually passed away about a year ago before I could get it running. So still working on it now it gives me that ability just to feel like um, he's still there kind of with me. Uh, but my question for Richard about the new one is, is it a, a Mustang that's been made to give you that sense of where it's come from, uh, where the history of it? Oh, Scott, a tough one. Sense of history. I mean, this is a lot more sophisticated than the original Mach 1 from 1969. But then 1969 was an era before adaptive suspension, adaptive exhaust, traction control even. And the original Mach 1 did have competition suspension that was good for its day, had a limited slip diff. It was available with more power. It was a muscle car, and muscle cars were essentially versions of ordinary cars such as your parents might have, but with a massive engine shoehorned in and then some other goodies bolted on. And in that sense, this is still a modern muscle car. It's not pretending to be a supercar. So yeah, I'd say there is a sense of history.
Hey Richard, long time fan and a uh, longer time fan of the Mustang. Behind me is my dad's 1970 Mach 1. It's a little hard to pinpoint exactly why I love the Mustang so much, but I think one of the big reasons is the community that surrounds it. Of course, I've bonded with my own father uh, over the Mustang, but I have also forged so many connections over the years. I've met a lot of really great people all over a mutual appreciation for this car. My question is, is it worthy of being called a Mach 1? Well, Alex, it's a faster, better handling version of a standard Mustang. So in that sense, yeah, it does. More deeply, well, it's a lot more complicated than the original, but so is everything these days. And it manages to be faster and to handle better without making a terrible fuss about it. It retains the sense of simplicity, of clarity, of purpose. So it retains the spirit of the original. So yeah, it does deserve to be called a Mac one. I'm gonna have one more go around the cones just to make sure. Just, you know, a bit more science to do. Ha, 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 ha.